Good morning from Key West. We're in Madison and Ivan, and today's Mad Adventure is exploring the history, the culinary scene, and the absolute beauty of Key West, Florida. And we are starting off with the full experience here, getting a flash rain right here at the southernmost point. There it is right there. The colorful thing in the background. We are 90 miles from Cuba. There you go. Closer to Cuba than we are to Miami right now. So we took a, uh, it was like about a four hour road trip from Miami. We're here with my parents and we are going to be discovering all things Key West, eating lots and lots of key lime pie. It's gonna be a great time. <laughs> Ivan and I are very much, let's just get there and get the drive over with road trippers. So when I tell you that there are two places you absolutely must stop if you drive from Miami to Key West, it should be taken seriously. The first stop was Lazy Days Isla Mirada, where we ordered the Yellowtail Lazy Day style, and it was absolutely delicious. Parmesan, key lime butter, just absolute yum. The next stop is going to sound absolutely ridiculous, but it is so worth it. Robbie's where you buy a bucket of bait fish to hand feed giant tarpon. It's completely insane. Out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. It took a while to get it to come, but once it did, that was insane. It, it doesn't bite, it doesn't really hurt, but I did get a little bit of a scrape here from his lips. Or not, maybe not teeth, just his like gums, his hard gums. That was awesome. Now it's dad's turn. What, yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the splash zone. <laughs> We paid $2.50 a person and $4.50 for the bucket of fish we shared. And before we started, I was questioning whether it was worth that, but oh my gosh, the amount of joy and laughter we got for less than $15 total Rescue. was worth every penny. Come out at you. Yeah, it's just instinct, right? <laughs> you can't help it. Got it. Wow. That is awesome. Well, this is really fun. What a great little splash. I think I might like this better than Bucky's. For your road trip stop. Now back to the overseas highway. Considered one of, if not the, most beautiful road trips in all of the US. We made it to Key West just in time for the sunset at Mallory Square, which is a huge deal. The only time I have ever seen this many people gathered to watch the sunset is in Santorini, Greece. There were street performers, vendors, and just a huge crowd of people here to watch the gorgeous sunset over the Gulf of Mexico. This sunset celebration has been going on every night since the 1960s. Such a beautiful tradition. Now we're walking down Duval Street, the main area in Key West for shopping, eating, and drinking to Old Town Mexican Cafe. Mm. Key lime pie and margarita. And it has like a, a pie crust rim. Super creamy, super delicious. This might be my favorite margarita that I've ever had. After dinner, it was time to begin our key lime pie tour of Key West. Oh. It's quite good. This one was a solid A for the crust and the meringue topping, but I'd say it's probably a B plus for the key lime filling. 
This morning, we woke up bright and early to catch the boat to beautiful Dry Tortugas National Park, where we will take you in the next video, so subscribe and catch that one. But tonight, we had the most incredible dinner at Hogfish Bar and Grill. Everything was great, including key lime beer, but the hogfish sandwich was amazing. And we can't go a day in Key West without making progress on the Key Lime Pie Tour. We are at Kermit's Key West Key Lime Pie Shop, a store that sells all things Key Lime, perfect for souvenirs. But of course, the star of the show is their Key Lime Pie. What's the sitch? It is very good. This is definitely the best Key Lime Pie we've had in Key West so far. It's just like, the perfect combination of sour and sweet and creamy. Fantastic. That is really well balanced, actually. It's not very sweet. And key lime is definitely the star of the show. The crust is really good, too. A little salty. Alton Brown said that the chocolate dipped key lime pie is one of the top 10 desserts in all of the USA. So you might have to get that later, yeah. It is a good morning to dive into Key West history. We are at Fort Zachary Taylor, which is situated right where the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean meet. The fort took 21 years to build and was completed in 1866. It played an important role in the Spanish-American and Civil Wars simply by being so dang intimidating. It never actually saw any battles. I mean, you'd have to be crazy to mess around with a fort this big with this many cannons. They have a free tour of the fort, which I highly recommend taking. We definitely discovered some areas and learned a lot of things that we wouldn't have otherwise. Like the fact that this beautiful ceiling design is actually structural to support 15,000 pound cannons. This hidden but very public bathroom with so many toilets for getting close and personal with your neighbor. That this collects rainwater for drinking. And as coffee lovers ourselves, one of our favorite facts. The Union troops really love their coffee. They, they drank three to four pints of coffee a day. Per person? Per person, oh yeah. It's a lot of coffee. As silly as it is, we had to head to the southernmost point in the continental U.S. to get the iconic picture. We waited in a 10-minute line to get it. And the funny thing is, if you look at the map, this isn't actually the southernmost point of the key but it is one of the most recognizable spots in Key West, and the pictures did turn out pretty cute. From the most iconic picture spot to the most iconic restaurant in Key West, Blue Heaven. Known for its Benedicts, pancakes, and most importantly, Key Lime Pie, this place is a piece of Key West history. Having been a brothel, an ice cream shop, and everything in between over the years, nowadays this whimsical restaurant is home to wandering roosters, and the most photogenic key lime pie I have ever seen. It's like a game of Jenga. You know, one yeah. the one that topples it. Oh. I think this one and Kermit's are pretty close. Our next stop is the Hemingway House. It costs $17 a person and a tour is included with admission. Hemingway and his second, out of four, wife, Pauline Pfeiffer, bought this house in 1931, and Hemingway stayed eight years before moving on to his third wife. At least 70% of his most famous material was written in this writing studio. One of the most famous parts about this house is its six-toed cats. There are over 60 six-toed cats here now, and the first of these cats was gifted to Hemingway by a ship's captain. These cats were particularly important to the Navy because they are especially good at catching mice on the ships. One of the most prominent features on the property is this massive pool, which takes the place of what was formerly Hemingway's boxing ring. You see, he traveled to Spain as a Spanish Civil War correspondent and had an affair. 
And when his wife found out, she built this $20,000 luxury pool. When he came home, he was very upset about the $20,000 that were spent and said, you've spent all but my last penny. Might as well take that too. He threw the penny on the ground and his wife had it cemented here in the concrete. Pauline Pfeiffer was an editor for Vogue magazine. So when he came home with a urinal from Sloppy Joe's, his favorite bar, she wasn't going to have it. So this kind of awesome looking water feature is actually made out of a urinal and a giant olive oil can. Almost every night Hemingway would walk from this house to Sloppy Joe's bar, so he decided to do the same and order his favorite drink. It's a sweet and sour grapefruit and rum cocktail. We also got to admire this wall of Ernest Hemingway lookalikes. How are you crossing the road, bro? For dinner, Cuban food at El Siveni. The food is great, and this is a real local hotspot. We know because we ended up in the middle of the high school baseball banquet. Congrats on the great season, Conk Baseball. It takes a whole team. On our final morning in Key West, it's time to squeeze in a final few things before the long drive back to Miami. We drove by the Truman Little White House where he ran the country for 175 days of his presidency. It's actually been used by six different U.S. presidents as a retreat. This is Kermit's Key West Key Lime Shop. We'd already been here for the regular key lime pie, but we had to come back for the chocolate dipped because as we were leaving the other night, we saw on the wall the chocolate dipped one was actually recognized as one of the top 10 desserts in all of America. And it is really, really good. I might still like it without the chocolate better because just the, the key lime flavor is just a little more intense and in your face, but this is also really delicious. I am glad we tried it. And you just can't beat, you know, when we've gotten key lime pie at restaurants, it's fun and all, but there's something about eating your key lime pie with this view, it's just amazing. It just feel like the real Key West experience. I should let Ivan have some. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it all. It's a nice chocolate on the crust. I think it does, I think it adds more to the balance. Good combo. Of our three key lime pies we have consumed here in Key West, I think Kermit's hands down has the win. And I'm very glad we tried three and did the ultimate key lime pie tasting test of Key West. When we come back, I know there's still more. If you have a favorite that we did not go to today, let us know in the comments below so we can try it next time we're here. Ours is done. I liked it. I didn't think the chocolate could add to the pie, but it did. I may like it without the chocolate better. I think Kermit's was the best. Yes, the key lime pie, Kermit's number one. Then Blue Heaven was number two. And then the Mexican restaurant is number three. Our final stop is a road trip essential, a strong Cuban coffee for the road from Key West's number one coffee shop, Cuban Coffee Queen. We had a royally great time exploring Key West this weekend. It is so cool to be able to take in so much history, natural beauty, and delicious food all in one quick trip. And I can't wait to show you the absolutely gorgeous Dry Tortugas National Park in the next video. Please hit that subscribe button. It seriously helps us so much. Hit that like button for the same reason. Join us on the next one for some incredible exploring and snorkeling. And until then, remember to live your own mad venture. Loophole.